the amazing places like this. Do you want to hear the story of Caltrout? Yeah! Okay. 50 years, half of a century. That's how long California trout has been working to ensure resilient populations of wild fish thriving in healthy waters for a better California, for all Californians. In the late 60s, on the banks of Hat Creek, a group of anglers embarked on a project to restore a famous trout stream. It was the first project of its kind in the nation, and a radical concept at the time, to manage a fishery exclusively for wild trout. A bunch of us down in San Francisco, uh, we'd meet for uh, lunch at a local fly shop, and we would talk about how the trout fishing had gone to hell and it was being supplanted by hatchery fish that we didn't respect. And we decided to do something about shortcomings that we saw in, in, our, in our sports. The Hat Creek Wild Trout Project was a resounding success. Throughout this process, a group of California's new activist anglers decided that they wanted to have a more direct, hands-on regional initiative where people, resources, and money could be focused on the issues and areas closest to their hearts and home waters. In 1971, California trout was officially incorporated. This was the first regional model for conserving wild trout, salmon, and steelhead and the cold water habitats they call home. After its official founding, Caltrout began to promote another radical approach to trout management, promoting a new philosophy among anglers. The phrase catch and release was coined, a logo design was commissioned, and Caltrout spread the gospel of catch and release fishing, not only through public perception, but also by pushing for regulations through the Department of Fish and Wildlife. That concept in uh, earlier days in other parts of the country was called uh, fishing for fun. But we thought that, well, all fishing is fun, so that doesn't make sense. So we, we dubbed it catch and release, and that's what it's become ever since. That goes back over 50 years. The leaders in fish and game, especially the chief fishery biologist, Alex Calhoun, thought we were just going to try to get some fly fishing only waters put aside. And we didn't care about fly fishing only, although many of us fly fished. He said we were concerned about the habitat and we were concerned about the fish that you can have a wild trout stream that is really natural and the fish are really doing well and it can provide a lot more enjoyment for people and you don't have to kill the fish. Caltrout's next several projects focused on spreading its now proven approach to managing wild trout fisheries across the state. In places like Yellow Creek in Plumas County, the Truckee River in Placer County, the East Walker River in Mono County, and Martis Lake near Lake Tahoe. While these wild trout projects proved successful, it soon became apparent that the greater need was to protect and preserve the last wild rivers themselves. On the Eel River, home to native Chinook salmon and steelhead trout, a major threat to spawning habitat emerged with a proposal to create the massive Dos Rios Dam. During those early years of California trout, the largest project and challenge before us occurred with the proposed construction of the Dos Rios Dam on the headwaters of the Eel River. The success that we had in fighting that created a new landscape and the first time a kind of anti-dam movement had happened in the past 80 years in the state of California. This was the tipping point project and California Trout was involved in it from the beginning. That was a, a big victory for us. But the thing was that the leader of our opposition there was Joe Paul, in his wisdom and, and brilliance, once we'd made that achievement, he said, we've got to get out of the dam fighting business and get into the river saving business. That began the war for the Wild and Scenic Rivers Act in California. Caltrout rallied its supporters and other concerned citizens to create the Committee of Two Million a grassroots organizing campaign that led not only to the end of the Dos Rios Dam project, but more importantly, to the passing of the California Wild and Scenic Rivers Act, protecting dozens of rivers throughout the state for their scenic, recreational, and fishery values. This was a powerful demonstration of the ability of a small organization of thoughtful, determined citizens to affect California's legislature for the benefit of our public resources. The organization continued to build its influence in the ensuing years, 
turning to legal advocacy in a landmark case against the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power. We challenged their water right to divert Russian levining creeks and run that water all the way down to Los Angeles. That had been going on since 1941. Caltrout stepped in when the, the ecosystem was really collapsing and took them to court. We conquered the Goliath. We won those court cases and set in motion a process to recover those stream ecosystems. Two major rulings stemmed from the lawsuit, known today as Caltrout I and Caltrout II, not only saving Mono Lake and its tributaries from devastation, but also establishing precedent for using the public trust doctrine to protect our natural resources for the benefit of all. Mount Shasta at 14,172 feet is the largest stratovolcano in the Cascade Range. The fact that all this pristine water is in springs in a 360 degree circumference around Mount Shasta was not lost on huge water bottling plants, including a multinational corporation. They wanted a million square foot water bottling plant in the village of McLeod, right at the headwaters of perhaps the most fabled stream in the entire state. Caltrout fought back and won. In the 90s, California Trout branched out from its base in San Francisco, creating regional offices in the key parts of the state where staff could work hand in hand with local communities to protect important waters and fish populations. With a foundation rooted in science, Caltrout expanded further by establishing partnerships with agencies, NGOs, and universities throughout the state. The seminal peer-reviewed report, State of the Salmonids, was the first to identify threats and possible solutions for all of California's native Salmonid populations. Well, one of the things I've always admired about California Trout is that it's an organization that values science. Um, and nowhere was that more evident in the partnership that became established with UC Davis. Well, the, the floodplain work demonstrated very nicely how Caltrout and the university can work in a partnership. Because you know, studying floodplains and how they're good for salmon is not something you would think a trout fishing organization would do, and yet here, Caltrout jumped in. For the next three decades, California Trout set the standard for science-based restoration, legislation, and advocacy to protect California's native Salmonids, as well as its water resources for the good of the public trust and all Californians. As California's population has grown, so too have the threats to its waters and the fish that call them home. To meet these challenges, Caltrout has continued to scale up its efforts. I think I started on the board around 1999 or 2000. Caltrout was about 1.5 million, and now we're pushing 18. And I think getting the message out was huge, and I think trying to understand how we could scale up the work and actually get the work done. We couldn't accept the work if we knew we couldn't do it. And we started spreading the message about the different regions and the work we were doing, and people started to understand and fund us. Today, the organization is thriving, dedicated, resilient, and committed. Finding ways to work with diverse partners and stakeholders, tackling tough issues, and solving complex resource issues by building consensus through science-driven solutions. Right now, Caltrout is as strong as ever. You can see this in our increasing scale of our projects that we're taking on. Whether it's a headwaters to the sea approach in the Eel River, working with tribes and a large consortium of others to remove four dams on the Klamath River, to floodplain habitat in the Central Valley, transforming entire landscapes. That's what it's gonna to take to realize a future of California that has cold, clean water for fish and for people. With the State of Salmonids II report as a guide, Caltrout continues the mission to identify threats, come up with solutions, and implement actions to achieve attainable goals. But Mom, what can we do? How should we help? We are getting to that. Our vision for the next 50 years is as hopeful as ever. It's a vision of inclusion, diversity, resilience, and prosperity in the fight to protect California's future for everyone. The organization's roots are among passionate anglers concerned with the threats facing our state's unique and awe-inspiring wild fisheries. 
but its impact serves everyone. From tribal communities whose ways of life revolve around river systems, to an agriculture industry that feeds the entire world, to every single person in California who relies on our natural resources. The last 50 years have been a tremendous success, but the work has only begun. With your support, together we will build on what we have accomplished, ensuring clean, cold waters run free throughout California as we save our native wild fish from extinction. Because a healthy fish population signifies a healthy and sustainable water system. And that means a healthy, sustainable future for California that we can hand off to our children, grandchildren, and all future generations of Californians. For our future. For California. Forever.